Um, alrighty, everybody. So we're going to start this uh, problem by doing a close read. So if I can get a volunteer to please um, read through on our first read. And oh wow, two volunteers, awesome. Let's go with Keone for our first read. Thank you, Keone. And as you read through, I would love for everybody to just kind of be thinking about what is the big idea of the text? What's the big idea of this problem? And what's being asked of us? Are ready? All right. While Darnell is grounded, his friend Jack brings him a video game. Darnell stands at his bedroom window, and Jack stands directly below the window. If Jack tosses a game to Darnell with an initial velocity of 35 feet per second, a function for height after t seconds is h of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 35t plus 5. And you can read the rest for us also. If the window is 25 feet above the ground, how many chances will Darnell have to catch the video game? If Darnell misses, when will the game hit the ground? Okay, very good. And um, does anybody have an idea here of just what, what are we even talking about? What are, what's this asking of us? What's the situation here? Yeah, <clears throat> on the speed at which, or the, like how long it takes height, yeah. for it to hit the ground. And let's take a minute before before we for figure out time. what we're how to solve this. I want to take some time to make sure we know what is even being asked. So just what what in the text is telling you. What's the situation? Can somebody re-describe this situation in their own words, just to make sure we're all looking at this the same way? Jack threw a video game at Darnell. Darnell. Right. Jack threw a video game at Darnell. And where is Darnell in relation to Jack? He's up. He's up. So Jack is up, and Darnell's, Darnell's below, up. and he's throwing a video game. Okay. If you imagine this, what do you expect the path of the video game to take? Up and then down. down. It's going to go up and then come back down, right? Yeah. Unless he catches it, it's going to go up and then and the up and stop. Right, okay, perfect. So we have a basic visual of how this is going to work. Um, so then, is there anything, is there, are there any words, or is there, are there any terms in here that um, anybody doesn't understand? Is there anything here that's pretty clear? Okay, so then, how are we going to go about um, solving the, the first part of it? It says, if the window is 25 feet above the ground, how many chances will Darnell have to catch the video game? What's a, what's a path that we could... We take to make that happen. Do we want to plug plug in what we have into the equation? So, I think you're onto something. Let's start with that equation. H of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 35 t plus 5. Right. We should also probably uh, highlight the 35 feet per second. 35 feet. Why is that it's not important? Because it's it's it, we give us a variable that we can plug in. Possibly. But, uh, Possibly. 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 What do you mean, Laura? Um, 35t, that's 35 feet per second. T is your second, so it's already in the equation. <coughs> Whoa. Interesting. Okay, so you're right. I do see a 35 there. What, when it says initial velocity, what is how, that? How fast it's going at first. At first, okay. So when you're It'll go slower. Maybe. It'll go slower later? Yeah. Why? Because, like, friction and gravity and forces don't like things going up. Right, so gravity's going to be pushing it back down or pulling it back down. So initial velocity, that's the starting velocity. I'm, I'm wondering, though, how, in terms of our function, it's h of t equals all that stuff there. How, what signals to us that it's the starting point? What signals to us that it's the beginning? What, what value of t would we be considering? Zero or one? one. Zero. I like that. So t equals zero. And why why is t equals zero our starting? Because that's like when it first you let it go and it's can't have negative seconds. Negative seconds, right? We get to choose. We get to choose where we're gonna start things. And it sounds like the way this has been written, we're choosing our initial as time equals zero. Very good. And I think that was key that you, you picked that out, Willis, that this is um, already factored into the equation here. Okay, so if the window is 25 feet above the ground, how many chances will Darnell have to catch the video game? Okay, what does it mean by yeah. chances? Yeah. Yeah. Is, it, is it like it comes up and it's like all of them out oh, of time? Oh, is this like a reach? guess and check kind of thing where like every answer that we solve is a correct answer for how many chances it took us to figure it out? Is this possible. Like that possibly. Possibly. I think that I think that it sounds like what we're all curious about is this, where it says how many chances, chances. how many chances we're going to have to catch the video game. Okay. So let's try to figure out the intent here. How high is the window above the ground? Twenty-five feet. Twenty-five feet. 25 feet. So if the window is twenty-five feet above the ground, at this point, 
in my mind at least, I'm trying to I'm trying to like hold on to too much at once, and I kind of keep losing something as I try to go to the next. Um, can we draw a picture that describes the situation mm -hmm. so that at least we can rely on that and then free up our brain to do the rest of the thinking? On the page or the wherever, board? wherever you're comfortable. I think I'm going to use the board. Who's at the bottom? Okay, because it's like a house and he throws it through the window. Yes, yeah. exactly, oh exactly. Gosh. So, test our art skills. So, so I'm in here with the one person. I'm wondering about that function too. What kind of function is that? H of T? Uh, a quadratic. quadratic. It's a quadratic. What kind of path might this like? Uh, you, uh, so we expect this to maybe go up yeah. and then go back down if he doesn't catch it. Something like that. I'm just going to put arrows for direction. Okay, so how many chances will Darnell have to catch the video game? What do you think would signify a chance based on if he can reach it? If, if he can, if he can reach it. So what's going to tell if he can reach it? How close it is to the window? What's that? If he throws it high enough. If he throws it high enough. So when we think about this parabola, how many possible chances could somebody conceivably have if if you have something that that is being thrown up and then it either never reaches you? Or it reaches you and goes past, goes up too high to catch, and you miss it on the first try, and it comes back down. Two, and then, but is there another way that we could see it also? Because maybe, like, as it's coming up, you can kind of have multiple chances on, like, the up. On the up? Yeah. You can have it, like, if, so, like, if it goes high enough, then it can, he has this chance and this chance to kind of catch it because it's kind of hitting it at different points. So okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna amplify what Keller just said because I think that's that's amazing. I think that's killer, Keller. <laughs> oh boy, math is punny. Okay, so Keller just showed this situation where, and that's not wonderful because his arm would have to be this tall. But, <laughs> but regardless, the idea is that because it's not the person's directly under, so you're gonna have it go up. And you'll have this chance, too high, too, too high, too high, and then have this chance again right here. Well, like, what, what do we consider, like, a chance? That's a good question. I think that the way it's being laid out, it sounds like we're talking about it when it's, like, an ideal chance, when it's exactly right. Okay, right. but... For once, I, I was kind of thinking... Possibly, like, but so if it's the maximum in this situation that she's pointing out right here, the maximum is going to be well beyond reach. Yeah. So there's going to be a sweet spot. Oops, I missed it. There's another sweet spot. It's kind okay. of what it so it's like. one instant because in my head I was kind of thinking of as like a zone where like oh because yeah. he can catch from like yeah you know and that's interesting this. we could interpret it like that also and maybe we could express this as a reasonable interval of values also I like that because that's real mathematical modeling because I mean you can't expect him to reach up a little bit or reach down a little right. bit right and so. it would depend on how many seconds the game is like in the zone right. that would be the number of chances. I also want to touch on what um, Laura brought up where what if we had the situation because you said something about the max right. What do you mean the max? Well, in the parabola, like, like, this would be like the highest point, that's your maximum. So if it went up to the window and then it falls back down, you would have that one chance to that, catch it. Okay, so place. you're saying what if the way that he threw it, there was just that one opportunity right up top to catch it. So if the game is underthrown, how many opportunities does uh, Darnell have? Zero. Zero. If it's thrown where the max is right there, in one that zone. One. And in Keller's situation, we had a total of two. 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 Okay. So these are all hypotheticals, right? So what can we do? What in the text will allow us? Now that we have the conceptual idea of our three options, what in the text is going to give us um, some insight into which one is the reality? He stands directly below the window. So he can just he throws it up like this. So he's definitely throwing it up. He's definitely throwing up. Is there anything in here that gives us more mathematical detail as to... I think the plus five. That could plus be like how tall he is. Jack is. I think you're right, actually. I think that's exactly yeah. what that means. Can we zone out a little bit, though? What is that plus five call out? The other 25. Zone out further. What is that plus five call out? The equation, the parabola. 
the fruit, the what of the parabola? The starting point of the parabola. So why is the equation? Or so when t equals zero, it's at five. Okay, and I see it's um, at five feet what, already. Yeah. And you're doing wonderfully. You're going to the next point. But I was, what I'm getting at is that what you're using right now is the function. You're using the function to try to figure out specifically how high this thing goes and how many chances this, this person will have. So let's, why don't we start with that? H of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 35 t plus 5. Okay. So if we know, and you said this also, Jocelyn, you said that he's exactly 25 feet above the ground. And what does this function tell us again? It says, it says the window is 25 feet. I think because of the information you're right, because of the information, we, we're going to have to assume that that's just the, that's the zone where he could possibly catch. Okay. So if, if we're going to assume that to be the zone, then what does this function represent? What is H? It's the height. So we know that this has to get how high? 25 feet. 25. So how can we figure out how can we figure out where this thing goes and, and how many chances it'll have? Putting 25 for each of the That's an option. Could we try that? Yeah. Okay. Does anybody think of another option that we could try simultaneously since there's lots of us? Uh, what do you mean guess and check? That's true. We could do that. What earlier we could try to like t is one then the height should be thirty five feet. We try like the height or what is thirty five feet per second? How fast he's running? Yeah, the game, the game. The initial velocity, right? So, and then we correctly describe the velocity since it's acting under uh, the force of gravity. It's going to be slowing down until it comes to a stop, and then it's going to be go in the opposite direction faster and faster. So could we it goes fast as the beginning. We can definitely factor. I want to get to one more point though that somebody brought. In fact I think it was you Lork. You talked about this this peak point. What did you call that? The maximum. The maximum. In terms of just a parabola, what do we call that point? The vertex. The vertex. So do we have ways of finding the vertex and would this be helpful? Negative B over two A. Negative yeah. B over two A is part of it. Or part of it. <laughs> and then you plug that back in. Exactly. So the vertex is the vertex is going to be the point negative b over two a comma and instead of f, I'm going to use h because that's our function. H of negative b over two a. Okay. And why is the vertex important again, Laura? What is it in in the context of this problem? The maximum, the highest point it could possibly go. What can that information tell us? How high it is. If it reaches the sweet spot. Exactly. So if this value that we can compute, if this value is bigger than 25, this implies that Darnell has how many chances? Two. Two. Exactly. If it's exactly 25, then this implies Darnell has how many chances? One. And if this uh, zero. is less than 25, we're going to see Does <laughs> Um, are we are we understanding what this is? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Let's ready, set, map. Negative b. Oh, I, oh, I don't know how to get b or a. What is a? B is negative sixteen. How do you know? Because that's a. <laughs> it's the number. <laughs> it, you're absolutely right. It is a. It's the first number of the function. It's with, the, with the square. What do we call that with? Um, the leading point? coefficient. Yes, it's a leading coefficient. Very well said. And then b is therefore. Um, thirty-five. Cool. And we don't need it, but if we did. We don't need it, oh, but if we five. did, what's C? Five. Yeah. All right, so negative B over 2A. Okay. Did everybody get 35 over 32? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's our x coordinate. That's our time. Let's figure out what 
that gives us for H of T. Does anybody else have a feeling that we're going to need a calculator? Yeah. I, I feel it. Lots and lots of fractions. Okay, I'll grab us a couple calculators and you guys keep setting this up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jocelyn, see that you went decimals and then you decided to go back. Why did you change your mind? No, no, because it's like middle. Because, I don't know, because, um, then I'd have to multiply this by the plus sign. And then, oh no, then you can change it. I think you're right, because I just did it with fractions and it was awful. <laughs> I don't know. So. Fractions are not. Sometimes fractions are easier, but in this case, I looked over there and I was actually jealous that you converted to a decimal first. So I feel like that would have been easier. Now that we have this tool in front of us, what's something else that we could do to check this without actually computing the vertex? Since we have a graphing graph. Oh, now you can, now we can graph it. We could graph it. So if you're already done with your computation, why don't you go ahead and graph the function. Sorry. Exponents first, so remember your order of operations. So exponents, exponents bingo, okay. Okay. Nice okay. 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 Be sure to check your work with your neighbors, and we'll check in a minute, but make sure that what you're getting lines up at least closely to what others have. Some differences based on when you decide the round, if you decide the round. Because I got it definitely when it's right. I need it too. So but let's see, let's do how 30.15 plus 5. So oh you know what? Did you multiply? 
divided by this one by um, 35 over 32, or times 1.09. Yeah. Uh, we check oh, that. Is that supposed to be a 36? Or is that just a... 38, try, I think that's 38. Try that part again. Just a, so how's that going to change your answer if you, instead of 30? How's that going to change your final plus answer? Plus eight. plus 8. So you were at 16 yeah. something, so just add 8 to it. somewhere else, which is fine. Okay. So Jocelyn is getting 24.11. She rounded. She chose to change her uh, fraction to decimal step one so that her calculator work was easier. Um, I did not. I kept it as a fraction, and I got 24.14 and some change. And I got 24.14. I got 24.12. Point one two. Okay, so you probably rounded also somewhere. But we're all getting something in the relative vicinity, right? 24. 24? Okay. I so, I got 3,800 at one point. You got 3,800? That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Jack's got a great arm. I looked over and she had like 600,000. And I was like, wow. So Jack is using a rocket. So this game there. That's, why I went, that's why I went to decimals because my fractions, I was like in the 10,000s. So I was like, something is not right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so he, he didn't make it. If we're, so, and, that's, and that's what I'm getting at. If we're saying that uh, oh, this only made it to 24, then did, did Darnell have a chance of catching this thing? No. no. So what's going to happen? He didn't get the game. He didn't get the game. So what's going to happen? If he doesn't get to it, he's going to be bored. Well, he's definitely going to be bored. But what's going to happen to the game? It's going to hit the ground, right? So It's like less than a foot away. Can he reach? You're right. No, we should probably take into account his arm length and figure this out for real. You're absolutely right. That's how grounded he is. He can't Yeah, he cannot. You are not to put a limb out the window. Okay, so if Darnell misses, which we know is true now, right? When will the game hit the ground? Okay, so the game is going to hit the ground when? This is a, a t value that we're trying to find, right? An, an instant of time. But what we graph, what situation? We could graph. That's an absolutely. Could, but what are you looking for on the graph? What the you, root. What do you mean the root? The answer. The zero. The zero. So specifically, a root is when what equals zero? The x or the y? The x. x. Y. The y. Because you're looking for x values. You're looking for x values, and you want to know when the y is going to be down here. So when your y is zero, okay? So we're looking for x values when the y is zero. In the context of this, we have this function. How can we make the y zero? We make. We set it to zero. We set it to zero. So instead of h of t equals stuff. Like zero equals that. The and then we b. can factor it. And then we should. I hope it's factorable. I hope it's. If it's factorable. If, it is, if it is factorable. I wouldn't get too excited about this one. <laughs> if it's not factorable, or can even we just if it is. This into a, uh, why don't we do both? So, how about. It sounds like some people really want to try to factor it. If they can, that's great. So, we'll have them work on that. And then. We can have some others try like to do quadratic formulas. I don't like that. <laughs> Go for it. I don't know. Um, can you be on team factor? Yeah, because. And we already have part of it. We already did one. We already got our first text song. I learned it this year, actually. During when we were like, don't use that. Wait, for what? That, like, the. Wait, negative. You learned it this year? D plus minus square root of. Yeah, I mean, I didn't learn it. D squared. D squared. Like, I don't know nothing else. Four AC. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, over to a factoring. Oh. Uh, so here's a little a little uh, head start. We already have negative b over two a, right? What is that? The x value of our vertex, right? So we can just call this 35 over 32 plus or minus the square root of. Good thing we identified that c value earlier, right? so we did need it.
What's that? Some fact, Jenga. Because there's so many very, like options. Well, but are there? Because you know for a fact they have to. The last two numbers have to multiply together to give you five. And so the that's first two, one. right? So it's got to be some combo of five and one. And the first two have to give you negative sixteen. Well, negative sixteen can be a fair amount of numbers. That's though. true. Because you can have negative four and four. That, those right. are easy with a negative eight and two, and a negative eight and over eight. That's going to give you five. When you, uh, when no. you or no, sorry, no. not five. Excuse me. Are any of those with a combination of one and five going to give you thirty-five? No. Right. I don't think it's possible. Well, because none of them are like about seven. Forty. Forty. Eight, eight times uh, positive. Oh, because we want to be positive. So positive eight times five will give you forty, and then one times two. No, that's not going to work. You're right. That might be a situation. Yeah, I don't think. 16. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that's going to factor. I don't think it's a factor. Hmm. So maybe you can hop aboard the quadratic equation with us. All right. <laughs> square feet. Both of the answers make sense in the context. No. No. no, why not? Because we want to find the second one. Two. Exactly. One of them is going to give us a negative unit of time, which doesn't make sense. Yeah. So, um, not in this context anyway. So we're going to want the positive one. And this here, I said this is the other one. Wait, did you get the same thing? The same thing. My butt. Because this is still being divided by the two as well. Mm -hmm. I should write this down. Oh, this is fine the way you have it if you keep that denominator. So so it's square root of 1545. It's because it's 35. It's 35 plus the square root of 1545 divided by 32. Wait, the positive thing or the negative? So the original, right? So if this is negative, then your B is negative as well. Negative 35. Because you put in the vertex, and the vertex already simplified out that negative. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. It's 32, 35 over 32. Plus mm -hmm. four, five, four, five, over 32. It's yeah. almost this needs a square root. Negative 32? Yeah. Square root. Because remember this right now. Oh, yeah. There you go. What'd you get there, Keone? very much agree with that second one. 2.32? Yeah, I got negative 2.32. Negative 2.32. You, you didn't make the... You didn't make something negative yet. 
negative 32. Oh, is that supposed to be me? Yeah, because yeah. 2 yeah, times negative 16. You flip negative 3 here. So bring it down. 32? Yeah, because it's two times negative. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Okay. That was a lot. Yeah, that was a lot. So, based on that information, when is this thing going to hit the ground? Uh, 2.3 seconds. Uh, 2.3 seconds later. Poor Darnell. He's not going to get his video game. Well, thank you guys. I think that was pretty good. Are there any questions about, about um, the general problem solving process here? Do you, do you feel like it helps to kind of take time to? change the text into, first off, an understanding, but then also get some visuals going to be able to lay out the situation. Yeah. 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 Figure out what we needed. Yeah. Very good. Thank you.